Hey, new addition to the Sedge Tool Shop, Blue Spruce Optima Bench Chisels. I'm gonna show you why they're fantastic, but I'm gonna step big D through some great applications of why you need a great set of chisels. Hey guys, before we get going, I just wanna let you know, I don't make an iota of money by promoting these chisels. I just like to promote things and teach Big D what I like to use here in the Sedge Tool Shop. All right, Sedge, those are some wicked nice chisels you got there. Um, I know I don't have a good set, so what <laughs> makes a good chisel a good chisel? Okay, we're gonna go through that right from the beginning. But remember that set you got earlier last year? It was last, last year. year. June. And, okay, and we tried to put a good edge on there. I think we got, how many were there, six? There was six, we made it to about two. Okay, and I think you paid around $100 for them? Yeah, about that. For the set of six. So, what I will tell everybody in this video, you can be penny wise, but please don't be pound foolish. Um, it's the steel, mm. okay? It's durability. It's how long the chisel will hold its edge. And we'll start there. All right. Okay, this first thing I wanna talk about is the steel. Okay. Okay, bought this this morning uh, at a big box store, and I tried pairing with it, okay, or using it ever so slightly. You'll see this in a minute. Um, it came out dull as molasses, <laughs> okay? It's lit on the packaging, it's CR-V, and if I'm remembering right, and you pulled it up, it's chromium vanadium steel. I've had so many things over the years touting chromium vanadium steel. They don't hold an edge long. They'll, they'll, they'll get sharp, but they won't hold the edge. Oh. So, with the blue spruce, when I first saw them, and this steel has been out for a while, it's A2 oh. steel, okay? It's double tempered, but then it's cryogenically tempered. So, what it means, it's wicked hard. It's on the uh, Rockwell hardness of si between 60 and 62. Now, you could go higher on a Rockwell hardness, but that's not good because it takes too long to sharpen. Oh. I think this is a perfect medium. Um, I've been using these for about two or three weeks now, and boy, they've held some great edges. So the first thing we always check when we get a chisel out of the package, because everybody thinks, oh, you can just take it to something and it's good. No, it's not. And it's also disappointing for somebody going into a big box store to get a chisel or go somewhere where it's got a, a fancy old name to it and it's dull, right? right? So you always have to hone it. But the first thing you have to do, a lot of people don't know, is come in here, Chris, is if you look at the backs of these Optima Bench chisels, look how they're highly polished. Okay, you can actually see the reflection in them. Okay, this is the one we got at the big box. You can see the machining on this. Oh, wow. So you have to do this, and you have to spend some time lapping them to get them dead flat. These are already done for you. And they are brought up, I forget what grid it is, but to a high polish. That's a differentiator right there for me. Okay, so one more thing about the flatness. I went and looked it up. <laughs> okay, you can't achieve this, it says by hand, this is machine polished to flat and uh, flatness to 0 0.0001. Wow. It's absolutely amazing. They've taken a lot of the effort of lapping the chisel so you can get right to what their chisel is doing, is designed for, is to pair, cut, slice. So let's look at the bevels. Okay. And the bevel on this one uh, stated it was a 28 degree. And when I look at this, I actually start to see that it's not even sharp. This needs to be sharpened, okay? Now when I look at this, uh, this is the bench chisel. It's four and a half to ferrule, okay, length of blade. It is ground at 30 degrees, high polish, but then there's a five degree micro bevel on it. Oh. Out of the box, these are wicked sharp. So it'll hold its edge. So I do not like to sharpen. <laughs> so if I don't have to sharpen often, then this is worth its weight in gold. Yes, absolutely. 
Another thing I noticed, they have different handles. Okay, so what's nice about it is let's talk about this one first. Okay. Okay, you're gonna notice here, it's steel at top here, mm -hmm. and this is a composite. All right, designed to use with a metal hammer. And the reason that's on there is to absorb everything. Okay. Okay, and when I say absorb, longevity, because you'll just sometimes crack this stuff. Oh, okay. Now, when you're using a wood chisel or a wood handle chisel, okay, it's always good to use a mallet. I've had this forever. But the problem over the years is you're gonna see with this, Chris, get in here, see all the dings and dents? Mm -hmm. Okay, now, Blue Spruce makes a, Infu uh, resin infused uh, head. Oh. So it's 50% stronger. The resin fills the pores. It's, it's pulled up with a vacuum to fill all the pores. That's cool. But they also do it with these. These are curly maple handles. Okay, and feel that in your hand. They just feel oh, good. Wow. Whether you're using them bevel up or bevel down. So what you get is a long wearing uh, chisel tip okay. because of the steel, but also the durability of the resin infused curly maple. So basically it's a resin wood handle oh, okay. and it has that nice tactile fit and finish of wood. Love it. Uh, one more thing about the blade. You'll feel along here, everything is really refined. This is a bevel edge. Okay, um, the, they have a set of dovetail, which is a lot thinner in here to get into those little nooks and crannies oh. of uh, pins and tails. Um, then there's a longer version, I believe, of a blade, okay, for uh, uh, deeper pairing operations. And then they have a set of firmers, I call them pig stickers, those are your mortise and chisels, so maybe we'll check those out future time. But um, enough of all the technical stuff. Now let's start comparing the edge of a blue spruce versus your typical big box chisel. Sounds good. So every chisel video that you watch out there, they're always gonna cut end grain, mm -hmm. okay? Because that is cross grain cutting with a chisel, all right? Um, let's try this one, and I'm just gonna take it like this. Always remember, your hands are never in front, and you'll see, that's kind of tough. That's right out of the box. Okay, now, this is the blue spruce. Look at that, night and day. Wow. That's how wicked sharp it is. So, I got these. I made room for them in my tool trough with my Kaizen, right? Yep. And I did that because I'm always reaching for a chisel for multiple applications. Some final fit and finish on things that I've done. Uh, instead of going to grab a hand plane real quick, I can just take it and I do a quick chamfer on something. I can just take it like this and you'll see how it's just so easy. So when you do something like this, that little chamfer, big dig, feel that. You'll feel how smooth it is. Oh wow. It's like glass, right? Yeah. That is a wicked sharp chisel. Okay, big dig, you ran into a little uh, dive. I call yeah. it a dive because we were using it bevel up. I was doing really light passes, okay? And I should have coached you a little bit better. Okay, but we have in this wood grain. Mm -hmm. So when you encounter stuff like that, I was using it bevel up. Sometimes it's good to use it bevel down like this and you will follow grain less. Okay? Oh, that's cool. Okay, but you still don't wanna go at a high angle like this, just very light cuts. So another great application that I use all the time when I'm doing some hand cut joinery is uh, revealing my knife edge line. Oh, hear me out because it's a it's a great way to get some great joinery and crisp cuts. So I'm just going to take this, bring this to my line, I'll shoulder it here, and come across with my marking knife like this. Okay, see that? Yep. Okay, instead of a pencil. Okay, then I'm going to come over to this line here, bring it in, and make my knife cut. But what's great about this, and I learned this years and years and years ago from Mark Adams. I, I had asked, why a knife instead of a pencil? He goes, because. And then I saw him do this, <laughs> okay? I'm gonna do it bevel down, all right? I mean, I'm sorry, bevel up, and then I'm gonna come in here at a very slight, and I'm gonna bring it right to my, see that? Oh. And what I've created 
is a little shoulder in here. Then I'm going to come over here and get this one, just like this. And that's all I need. Wow. Because what that does, two things, two things in joinery. Okay, one, watch. I can bring, see that? Yep. And bring it right to my 90. It gives me a hard shoulder for chopping. That's awesome. Okay, to establish that. But even more so, when you're using a handsaw, it gives you that shoulder and an easier start. That's awesome. Okay, and bring it right up like this and cut. <laughs> okay, so I really I like doing those knife edge lines Yeah. and bringing it just in like this so I could take that and watch. Do we have that wood mallet for me, Big D? Uh, yep, right here. And I could bring it like this and just, and I could start chopping. Wow. Okay, now when I chop, I'll do something like this. And this is something that you'll get used to over the years is I'll do a series of cuts like this across, okay? And then I can always come in like this because I don't want to drive it back, but I'll come in here like this, bevel down and come right in. See this? Oh, wow. And I can just do it like that if I chisel it out and then go back and forth. That's awesome. And this, <laughs> by using it and getting a good set of chisels, makes that woodworking process and joinery so much easier. It's so worth buying a good set of chisels. So when you have the application of this, where you've made a notch with your capex, you'll have some roughness at the bottom. And you gotta break it out like this. So in this application, it's a, it's a bevel up. Okay. Okay, because we really want the flatness of this to make sure that that's flat. And it's just establishing it and just cleaning up that, that notch we have. And we'll just bring it up just a little bit more. But you see, I'm not going all the way. I'm gonna attack it because that may tear out on that side. Okay. So I'll just come and grab this side. And you can just, and when you're using a chisel, it's, a, don't, it's not a rush. Just take your time, you know? And just, it's, it's fun. Way better than sanding? Way better than sanding. <laughs> the other reason that is so imperative that's dead flat is because we could take that now and we can bring it right down at a perfect 90 and clean out those corners. Nice. See that? Yeah. And that gets you right where you need to be. I also use chisels on a lot of frames, face frames or door frames, and I can get right into that corner and do my final fit and finish just like this, and then come around and get it just like this. It's always, always a pleasure with a sharp chisel. Oh, yeah, there you go. So big day, <laughs> a lot of applications for chisels. And I only cover like two or three. There are so many reasons you need chisels in your shop. In the comments below, tell us what you use your bench chisels for the majority of the time. So as we always say, be positive, stay sharp, wicked, wicked sharp. sharp.